Can you tell us a little bit about what PragerU is and why you started it for those who might not know uh, what this whole story is about? Well, we are the largest conservative education site in the world. To the best of my knowledge, we have over a billion views a year. And the happy news, most of them are under the age of 35. We have an entire kids section now, PragerU Kids. We've been adopted by the states of Florida and Oklahoma and Arizona and Montana, among others. Officially and unofficially, teachers use our materials in schools. And of course, parents should show this to their children. It's wholesome history and stories. And uh, we, we take God seriously. Uh, it, it's it's really special stuff. It's at PragerU.com. And we also have about 700 five-minute videos for people high school through 100 years of age, which are extremely professionally done from mm -hmm. the Civil War to uh, mo modern American life. We have a series on every president. If you, The best way to learn history is through biography, and we have biographies of every president or nearly everyone up. Anyway, people should go to PragerU.com and they'll sort of get addicted. It was founded by, really, Alan Estrin. Uh, then I co-founded it with him, but it was his idea on a on a ship we were both on in the Indian Ocean. Walks over to me and says, Dennis, let's start Prager University. And he wasn't joking because he never jokes. That's not his personality. And I go, well, what do you mean? He said, we got to get your ideas to more people. And... That's all I care about is getting my ideas to more people. I, I wrote that, in fact, in my high school journal. I actually wrote, I know what I want to do with my life, influence people to the good. That's what I wrote when I was a junior in high school. I have never wavered on that. I am preoccupied with good and evil. I hate evil. And uh, when I learned the famous uh, statement in Psalms, those of you who love God must hate evil. I realized that was my favorite verse in the Bible. If you don't hate evil, you don't love God. It's a really, really important point. I wish every priest, rabbi, and minister uh, would emphasize that uh, uh, every time they meet their congregants. You you don't love God if you don't hate evil. And that's, that's It's a tremendous... I hate evil, and I love goodness, and that permeates uh, all, of, all of what we do. Hmm. I love that. Well, speaking of that dichotomy between evil and good, um, it seems like there's a flip in our culture where people will say good is evil and evil is good. And then there's this, we used to be kind of this marketplace of ideas where you could debate such a concept, but now instead there's this cancel culture that rides high and things are squashed and you really are on the front lines of um, crusading that. I wanted to ask you, um, what's the cause of this? How society is now promoting cancel culture and indoctrination. What caused that and how do we fight it? It's a very, it's actually a tough question to answer, but I, I realize how deep it is that Isaiah thousands of years ago said, woe unto those who call good evil and, and those who call evil good. And you have a living example right now, those who think Hamas are the good guys and Israel are the bad guys. That is a perfect, uh, perfect example. It shows, among other things, how unreliable the conscience is, that if it's not informed by something higher than the conscience, it's usually worthless. By and large, for most people, the conscience is what they want it to be. They feel something and then they uh, live with their conscience. The amount of horrible things that people have done or horrible things that people have supported, which is even a larger group, and then slept well at night, <laughs> it proves how malleable the conscience is. You know, people say, well, I, you know, I, I listen to my conscience. Well, that doesn't reassure me that every Nazi, every communist, uh, Hamas, and all their supporters also listen to their conscience. So uh, your, your conscience has to be informed by something higher. My, my, my choice is the Bible. So I'm writing my, uh, the fifth volume of my commentary, The Rational Bible. And I call it The Rational Bible because I use reason to bring people to the brilliance of the Bible rather than faith alone. 
Anyway, uh, why do people do this? Well, first, one is that it's uncomfortable to confront evil. It, it takes what you, you wanted to make, what did you say, uh, courage contagious? I love you for that. That's great. That's exactly right. It takes courage to confront evil. And uh, the entire left, uh, not liberals, but left, uh, they, they confront good rather than evil. Uh, America is the enemy and uh, Israel is the enemy. I mean, two of the finest countries ever, ever made. They're, they're the bad guys. It's, it's, I'll, I'll give you an example of how, how a fear of confronting real evil permeates the left. There's a very famous quote unquote art piece called Piss Christ. It's a crucifix in the so-called artist's urine. It has gone through some of the biggest museums in the United States. The, uh, uh Andres Serrano, the guy who made this, he doesn't fear any Christian's going to kill him. But uh, if you paint one picture of, of Muhammad, you may have your, your throat slit, and many have, just for painting a picture. No urine, just painting a picture. So there, there's no such thing, and there shouldn't be, by the way, Quran in the urine, in urine. There, there's no such thing but a, a crucifix, because they know Christians won't hurt them. So they take Christians on. And I'm a Jew saying this, uh, so which gives it added credibility, because obviously I, you know, I don't have an ax to grind here, but I, I, the only ax I have is truth. Another thing you mentioned in the beginning that I loved, your, your, the commitment to truth. The truth is people, are, uh, people know Christians uh, don't pose a threat. Uh, but many Muslims do. Mm. Not all by any means, but many do. Mm. You know, Mr. Perger, I really want to follow up on what you just said about truth, and especially in the confrontation of evil. A lot of my peers currently actually support Palestine and oppose Israel, and they say that it's because Israel is occupying or colonizing Palestine. So what is the best way that someone my age can effectively communicate those ideas to my peers that Hamas is indeed evil and Israel is good. right. Well, so there are two quick answers and well stated by you, by the way. So two quick answers. First, there is no country on, on earth that is not quote unquote colonizing somebody else. Uh, in, uh, in Canada, they say that they've colonized native, native Canadian lands. And here we've colonized native American lands it's endless. And, and by the way, they colonize somebody else's land. Uh, it, it, so it, the, it, it's an absurdity. Secondly, uh, the only countries that ever existed in the history of that part of the world were two Jewish uh, countries, both called Israel, uh, prior to the, the third Israel. This is the third Israel to be a sovereign country there. There was never a Palestinian state. There was never a Muslim state. It was never an Arab state. It was just an area. It was last controlled by the British prior to that for many years, controlled by the Ottomans who aren't even Arabs, they're Turks. So it, they don't know anything, the people who say this. They know nothing. History, uh, they know as much about history as they do about botany. Uh, this is the tragedy of your generation. It's not your fault, your generation's fault. Uh, fools taught you, and therefore uh, people believe it. Like they believe that lockdowns for kids was good in school. Uh, almost everything they're taught, that or that a boy can become a girl. That is uh, Here, a boy can become a girl is as true as Israel is the villain and, and the Palestinians are the good guys. The, mm -hmm. the Palestinians Palestinians brought modern terrorism into the world as we know it. They slaughtered the entire Israeli Olympic team in the 1972 Olympics in Germany. Does one kid in your grade know that? I'm sure zero do. They should all watch the movie Munich to get an idea. The Palestinian contribution to modern life is terror. That's good, Dennis. The, Jewish, the Israeli contribution is half of the medicines you use. <laughs>